Uh, welcome you all to the next class in uh, inorganic chemistry of life, uh, principles and perspectives. In the last two classes we have been uh, looking at nickel containing enzymes and nickel as you have seen it is a very unusual kind of an enzyme, uh, uh, nickel containing enzymes where most of the reactions are gas based reactions either the reactant or the product. Uh, so, today we will look at uh, one another uh, category of enzymes based on the nickel which is popularly known as carbon monoxide dehydrogenase. Okay, so, this is uh, sh in the short form is referred as CODH carbon monoxide CO is for carbon monoxide dehydrogenase DH so CODH. CODH carbon monoxide dehydrogenases are there even uh, in the aerobic bacteria where molybdenum is present not the nickel. But here therefore, we are going to look at only the nickel containing one not the, uh, the molybdenum containing one. So, the nickel ones are there in the anaerobic bacteria. So, uh, so if you um, look at the earth uh, creation uh, life uh, uh, generation I am sure you must have uh, read here and there it has started with uh, reducing atmosphere and then the life has started out of that. So, it is believed that these CODH enzymes which are capable of converting carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide and back and along with other enzymes can convert into methane do many more uh, conversions. So, therefore, it is a strong belief that these enzymes would have turned the whole uh, the uh, reducing atmosphere of the earth to the current kind of a, a situation. Okay. So, uh, so, as I said that it can this CODH can catalyze the reactions of uh, CO2 to CO and also you can have CO2 to CO2. And the CODHs are having both the monofunctional type, bifunctional type. So, when you say bifunctional you have the activity coming from the carbon monoxide dehydrogenase and another enzyme may associate with itself to in order to make uh, uh, additional reactivities uh, for example, acetyl coenzyme A synthase. So, the, the CODH can combine with this towards the end of this uh, lecture or end of this topic we will look at this multiple functioning of the CODH. So, as I said that the CODH with the nickel is anaerobic. So, therefore, it is a part of the methanogenic, aerogenic, uh, carboxydopropic, acetogenic, sulfate reducing, hydrogenic bacteria. So, it is present in a variety, variety, variety of uh, bacteria where it uses the CO as a source of energy and CO2 as a source of the carbon and that is how the entire carbon cycles are being maintained by the CODH. So, as I said the monofunctional form and then bifunctional form, bifunctional form along with the acetyl enzyme co uh, uh, synthase A and that will couple with this CODH and we will see all those details as we keep moving across. So, it is uh, uh, some kind of statistics is known uh, the these enzymes tend to remove uh, uh, about 108 tons of CO from the earth atmosphere per year. Uh, and then convert into other kinds of products initially to CO2 and then CO2 by other enzymes into other kinds of things too. So, therefore, uh, these enzymes help in controlling the uh, atmospheric levels of the at the at the uh, earth surface the CO levels. Okay. So, they can also utilize the CO and uh, in the process it can generate the uh, hydrogen too. So, therefore, these are uh, a huge set of enzymes where the carbon monoxide dehydrogenase is one of that which plays an important role. Okay, let us look at uh, one of those enzymes uh, carbon monoxide dehydrogenase. Here on the left side on the top uh, uh, the panel we have the enzyme structure. This particular enzyme structure is a, from a bifunctional it is see carbon monoxide dehydrogenase with acetyl coenzyme synthase. Acetyl coenzyme synthase is referred in short form as ACS. So, this is in uh, uh, thermoacetica uh, bacteria and from this bacteria this protein has been isolated, crystallized and the crystal structure and what you are seeing here is a crystal structure. 
as you can see there is something which are labeled as alpha, there is something else is again here labeled as alpha and there is something labeled as beta and there is something labeled as beta. So, it is primarily it is the, the alpha units are the ones which are coming from the acetyl coenzyme synthase part and the beta parts are the ones which are coming from the, uh, the carbon monoxide dehydrogenase. So, basically the carbon monoxide dehydrogenase enzyme is embedded uh, into the uh, two units of this acetyl coenzyme A. Okay, so, uh, and uh, these have got uh, the nickel iron sulfur clusters called A and nickel iron sulfur cluster called C and these are there. And besides these nickel uh, iron sulfur clusters, the nickel iron sulfur clusters should be taken as the reactive centers where the reaction occurs actually. In addition to that you find several of the iron sulfur clusters. These iron sulfur clusters should be taken as uh, those involved for the electron transfer. We already have studied in this under the story of iron, the iron sulfur clusters, electron transfer properties, all of these that we know very well. So, as you know the COdH is, uh, is in the center part of that uh, as a B eta units and flanked by the alpha units into this. So, in, into the central core of the enzyme and each of these have got the nickel ion sulfur cluster of different types that you have for the reactivities of this. And this total enzyme of this is 310 kilo Dalton and it contains 7 4 iron 4 sulfur clusters. These can be seen in the later slides much more with clarity of which one iron sulfur cluster is in this, other iron sulfur cluster is in this, remaining 5 are present within these between the the beta subunits of the COdH. Okay. And uh, among those 5 you have 2 are the B type, 2 are the C type, two, 1 is the D type. So, 2 beta type, 2 C type and 1 D type of the iron sulfur clusters are embedded into this. And as I said in the later uh, slides you will clearly see how they are and how they communicate the electron transfer to this thing. Okay. So, these are all involved. Uh, the catalytic activity as I mentioned is through the nickel ion sulfur clusters and the electron transfer is through the just simple ion sulfur clusters. Of this. And these uh, ion sulfur clusters, uh, uh, the interior ones then uh, of the B type and D type, these clusters transfer, transfer electrons away from the C cluster and these carry towards the external reducing uh, proteins, redox proteins, not reducing protein, redox proteins that is like say for example, feridoxin. So, the in the uh, acetyl coenzyme synthase, the active center is in the alpha unit, there is one more in the alpha unit of this one. So, the rate of the conversion of the CO to CO2 by these CODH kind of an enzymes. Uh, of the nickel containing one shows rates of 40,000 per second inverse. And these are basically diffusion control because there is a lot of gas uh, molecules are involved in this. So, K cat by K m is around uh, 2 to the 10 power 9 uh, mole inverse second inverse at 65 degrees Celsius. And as I was talking to you about A cluster looks like this this part is the iron sulfur, this part is the nickel, these two are connected. And this is C type cluster, this portion is the iron sulfur, this portion is the, is the nickel part of it, the green one nickel part of it. So, this is the iron sulfur, these two are integrated. So, these two are bit different in nature okay, and uh, these are present accordingly in these enzymes. Okay, uh, as I told you earlier that uh, you can see that the 5 iron sulfur clusters you can see here 1 here, 2 here, 3 here, 4 here, 5 here that is how it is. So, these are all present in the COdH and 1 each is present in the acetyl coenzyme A synthase. So, there is, that is that is how you can see that they are all separated by 10, 12, 13 angstroms from here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. So, these are the ones which couple the electron transfer and they do take electron from uh, C to B and D and then finally, give it to external uh, 
uh, redox proteins uh, like pyridoxins, etc., in these ones. This is one of the centers of the nickel iron sulfur cluster, which is reactive center, and you can see the surrounding how it is. Now, a, a crystal structure of one of these uh, CODH ACS crystallized under high pressure and the pressure is used by the xenon atoms. So, that means xenon atoms have got uh, uh, crystallized in the open space or the cavity. So, this blue ones is the one where you have a kind of a uh, tube like structure where the gas passes through and in a uh, enzyme that is a, a free space. So, this free space is filled by these xenon atoms when you pressurize and then you can see the path of the gas how it moves from one to the other. So, this portion is from acetyl coenzyme synthesia, this portion is acetyl coenzyme synthesia and this part which is in the center is the one for coming from the carbon monoxide dehydrogenase and you can see the five clusters here. The ion sulfur clusters which you have seen over here. Okay. Now, you understand the skeletal aspects of the structure of the CODH coupled with the acetyl coenzyme A. So, it is a very uh, thing. Now, let us go, come to the reaction. So, the re in the reaction of this uh, you are talking about the C cluster of uh, ion, uh, nickel ion sulfur cluster with the nickel center here when you uh, pass carbon monoxide. Uh, so, for a period of time then this would uh, tend to attach to the nickel center over here and uh, this uh, the neighboring ion center has the hydroxyl which will act like a nucleophile. So, the nucleophile will be acting on this CO or carbon monoxide which is bound to the thing and for that you require a deprotonation and the deprotonation is triggered by the binding of the CO here will bring some changes in the in the protein which will pull out this proton out therefore, you have a O minus and this O minus will attack on this particular CO and then form an intermediate you see that NiCOOFE. So, you have a bimetallic uh, intermediate is a bimetallic intermediate is there. Now, this uh, is due to further entry of water and conformational changes uh, and this will come out as CO2 and uh, the proton and that will lead to the cluster uh, in a slightly different uh, redox state of this one. Okay. So, you have a different state and this particular different state of the redox state as you can see over here. Uh, so, this is regenerated back to this by using a coupled reaction. Okay. So, this is uh, 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 the uh, B type uh, oxidized going to reduced, the B type ion sulfur cluster oxidized will go to the reduced and uh, then it oxidizes the reduced part. So, you have a reduced form of the nickel ion sulfur cluster here and this is reoxidized. So, the oxidized one will get reduced and the, this reduced one will get oxidized and that is given to pyridoxin. So, therefore, the B cluster of ion B ion sulfur cluster is, is communicating the electron with the pyridoxins outside. Okay. So, now you understand, okay. so return back. Now, this one as you can see the carbon monoxide binding, carbon monoxide uh, conversion, this and uh, release is called like a ping. So, the protein going from this native state to a reduced state. And then to bring back to the native state, you have a pong mechanism and this is the electron is uh, taken out by this uh, oxidized cluster and the cluster becomes reduced and the catalytic center will get oxidized. So, you know that always when there is some reduction it is always coupled with an oxidation, you should see always that one. So, it is an excellent way of doing. So, this part of the thing is called ping this part of the thing is called the pong and you know where the ping and pong are referred. I am sure you know uh, in by various means or you yourself will be playing a table tennis. In the table tennis it is referred as the ping and the pong. 
So, ping is you pushing the, the ball and the, and the back the receiving from the other your neighbor. So, this is kind of a ping pong reaction. Hope you understand the whole protein. So, the protein has got uh, the acetyl coenzyme on this side flank, acetyl coenzyme synthase A and then CODH and then you have all these clusters two of the B type, two of the C type and D type. Uh, at the end uh, one of the B type will uh, revert it back. So, you have a, an enzyme going to the reduced form and then reduced form is reoxidized and this is the kind of a cycle. And by putting the xenon atoms you could see the path through which the gas is going out. So, you need to uh, entry gas and exit all these kinds of things are there and they can be funneled to the funnel. So, therefore, you can have a gas molecule going from the acetyl cosynthase A to this uh, CODH as well from CODH to acetyl cosynthase A. So, that means these two together can do a lot of things, we will come to that in a while. So, is this uh, uh, clear? Carbon monoxide binding at the nickel center, FeOH uh, providing a nucleophilic attack by deprotonation giving an intermediate between the nickel and the iron uh, the, the uh, COO is bridged between them and this is released as CO2 and the protein the uh, center is reduced and this nickel center is the reduced nickel center is reoxidized back to the normal uh, by this uh, B part of the oxidized uh, iron sulfur cluster going to the reduced and the ferredoxin oxidized goes to the ferredoxin reduced accordingly. Okay, uh, this is one part where we have seen CO going to CO2. Let us look at another uh, enzyme where the methyl grows to methyl moiety goes to methane moiety, the methyl going to the methane moiety and this is referred as methyl coenzyme M reductase. So, MCR. This methyl enzyme coenzyme M reductase has got uh, a coenzyme part called uh, F430. So, have a look at this F430 and this enzyme can do a turnover of 100 per second and with the KCAT by KM uh, of 1 into 10 power 5 mole inverse second inverse very interesting. So, this looks in the first side as if it is a porphyrin and if you look at very close by no not a porphyrin highly reduced uh, centers that you have. So, uh, and this enzyme has a hexameric with alpha beta gamma twice structure. So, dimer of a trimeric protein, alpha subunit, beta subunit, gamma subunit twice of that with the, uh, the catalytic center of this uh, nickel hydrocorphin uh, which is referred as the F430. This is present in the alpha subunits of this protein. So, this particular thing is, is present in the uh, alpha subunit uh, of the coenzyme. Okay. And by being this highly reduced form of this and this is able to stabilize the nickel 1 and nickel 1 is essential for initiating the reaction. If you do not have a nickel 1 here, if it is nickel 2, no reaction can occur. So, therefore, the, the nature has designed this coenzyme uh, F430 for the reason that it can maintain nickel 1 uh, in the state and nickel 1 can initiate the catalysis. So, there are uh, as you can see in the next slide there are two paths of mechanism, the path 1 is here and path 2 is over here. Before that let us come to this particular reaction of the enzyme, two proposed paths. So, the methyl portion bound to the uh, coenzyme M, there is another coenzyme B with the sulfhydryl will assist the reaction to break down this SME to form SS bond. In the process it gives a proton and the CS3 radical will get take a proton radical or CS3 minus will take a H plus uh, uh, and then form the corresponding CH4 and then the corresponding disulfide. And this will be further broken down to bring back to the normal by other enzymes. So, as you have seen in the previous slide this, uh, uh, this is the um, F430 structure over there. Now, let us look at the mechanism in the in the this goes through the step 1, goes to the step, step 2, step 3 and then goes to the both of them step 4. And this also goes through the step 1 different type, step 2 different type, step 3 different type then common. So, that means, they come to a common 
kind of an intermediate at this stage which leads to the product of this. Okay, nickel which is in reduced form is called nickel 1, nickel 1 now can act like a act like a nucleophile, so the nickel 1 can act like a nucleophile because it is electron rich you have lot of electrons are there and this can attack at the methyl and the methyl uh, is pulled out from this coenzyme to form a nickel uh, methyl and the nickel 1 goes to what nickel 3. So, what does it mean nickel 1 has got oxidized to nickel 3. So, what does that mean that means that it has given away the two electrons. So, it has given away the two electrons to make this one and then bind to itself that means CS3 minus you are getting into this. So, now the nickel methyl uh, moiety uh, and then you get the, uh, the other part the uh, COMS uh, uh, SH part of that where the proton is coming from the uh, this counterpart of the thio part of this. And now uh, this forms a, a nucleophile attacks on this particular thing and uh, uh, and then that will pick up the methyl as the methyl radical with the H. So, therefore, you get the methane out. So, once the methane out you get a intermediate structure like this and this intermediate structure is returned back to the disulfide and this disulfide will further react to get back to the individual ones that we do not need to worry. So, pick up of the methyl from the coenzyme by nickel 1 converting to nickel 2 methyl nickel sorry nickel 3 methyl and now this is being assisted by the, uh, the other one CO coenzyme with SH giving away the proton and that leads to uh, the creation of this radical and then attack here to form the thiol kind of a radical thiol disulfide thiol kind of a radical and uh, uh, that goes back. And the other side here the nickel one can instead of taking away the, the methyl can attack on this to make a break into the methyl radical and this methyl radical is sort of uh, initiates a radical into this spot COBS dot and that methyl radical will take a hydrogen that means the methyl is picking up the hydrogen outside with the other one. So, these two are two different kind of a mechanisms in this case straight away the methyl getting to nickel 1 going to the nickel 3 and here you are not proposing nickel 1 and nickel 3 the uh, kind of a nickel 2 both and this particular thing takes up a proton and then from this and goes into meth uh, methane and that forms this and this again attacks on this and forms this particular intermediate go back to that ok. So, in all these. So, these are the uh, kinds of a, uh, proposed mechanisms and uh, we are not going into the details both of these are possible to be to be giving the final product at this stage we do not need to worry uh, which of these are fully supported by the uh, by the experimental or some computational which I am not going into the details. At this stage you take these two as the two uh, mechanistic aspects of it. No, so, so you have already seen CO to CO2 CO going to CO2 conversion. Now, here uh, coenzyme methyl going to methane conversion and then let us look at the third part is acetyl coenzyme how it functions. Acetyl coenzyme will do what? It will do acetyl moiety synthesis. So, what is acetyl moiety? So, acetyl moiety is CO CH3. So, that means you have to get uh, CO. So, get CO, get CH3, and then you form a bond. Uh, to get uh, enzyme bound CO CH3 then uh, break this one break this part of it.
want to release. So, you have basically uh, 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 you have to bring from one side a CO, the other side the methyl and combine them together. So, you can see that uh, uh, you can see that that there is another enzyme CODH we have already um, talked about CODH is enzymes can make a CO to CO2 as well as CO to CO and therefore, uh, from that enzyme it has assumed that CO is coming and this is the enzyme portion that you have and this is the enzyme uh, uh, portion which is the acetyl coenzyme synthase A cluster not C cluster A cluster and that is way over here. So, you see that ion sulfur cluster a nickel and a nickel and this is the active centers of this. And the CO which comes from this uh, CODH will funnel through that particular channel which I showed you earlier. So, this will uh, the CO that is coming from here will channel through and then go to the acetyl coenzyme uh, synthase part. Okay. So, that CO now is attached to the nickel center here. So, that is the nickel center here and that nickel center which is shown as a P that is the one which is reactive which will make the carbon monoxide. Now, the methyl has to come from somewhere, where will it come? It comes from some another and this methyl part will come from B 12. Okay. So, uh, which I talked to you when we talked about the cobalt enzymes. Okay. So, therefore, it will come from a cobalt uh, uh, 3 methyl. So, the methyl is coming from another enzyme coenzyme which is called the uh, cobalamine with, with the in the form of the cobalt 3 CH3. Now, this CH3 is, is transferred to the nickel center. Now, the CODH is transferred CO and the cobalamine transferred the methyl and both of them transferred onto the platform of the acetyl enzyme synthase A ACS acetyl uh, coenzyme synthase. See that? So, one part is coming from one enzyme, other part is coming from another enzyme and here you have the acetyl synthase coenzyme. Now, now you have captured both the CH3 and CO. Okay? So, methyl CO is coming from CODH and methyl from uh, uh, cobalamine cobalt CH3. So, the two joining together and this gives and both of these will give to the acetyl coenzyme synthase. So, you will have a CO, you will have CH3 and this will go as a CS CO CH3. Okay. So, that is where the enzyme part is. So, you can see that uh, this formed the CO CH3 and uh, this will further undergo redox to get the cleavage of this and go back to that as CO minus A and then enzymes. So, you see that. Okay. So, you have multifunction CODH is multifunctional as I said earlier. So, uh, you can see this very simple, but otherwise it looks very complicated. So, this is the part on the right corner you have the, the folate kind of thing where you have the carbon dioxide and uh, the converted to the methyl and uh, you, you, this is fun, further funnel through the thing and given and you have an enzyme uh, where the CODH gives the CO and this folate enzyme giving this one methyl and get onto the same as CO E CO CH3 form just now I explained to you and this is the other part of the enzyme this enzyme will come out as a coenzyme synthase and this will be further cleaved to give the uh, acetyl part and this so, go for the reduction to the CO2 part of it water and then CO goes back. So, multiple there is an enzyme working, enzyme working, enzyme working in this. Uh, so, all this. So, this is a multifunctional kind of an enzyme platform, uh, multifunctional enzyme kind of a platform now you have seen. So, you have a CODH, you have a acetyl coenzyme synthase A, you have other enzymes based on the 
folate etc bringing the co2 to ch3 to ch4 uh, cs3 sorry uh, adding to this particular enzyme codh adding the co and together forming this so you see that whole thing is a complex mechanism of this this is how the nature in the early days when we have a reduced atmosphere has been able to remove all the carbon monoxide from the earth atmosphere or try to reduce and now although it maintains the minimum levels of the uh, carbon monoxide and the thing. So, essentially under this nickel title what we have learned we have learned uh, an enzyme where the urea gets hydrolyzed as you can see to ammonia to CO3 we have looked at the hydrogenases now we have looked at just now the carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbon monoxide dehydrogenase. We have looked at the methyl coenzyme reductase, we also have looked at the acetyl coenzyme A synthase and uh, we have looked at prior to that nickel superoxide dismutase, all of these and glyoxylase how the conversion cis trans uh, all these things. And uh, so, only uh, so we have more or less convert uh, covered entire thing that we have here a galaxy of the enzymes present under the nickel. So, and they are all except the glyoxylase uh, one uh, they are all containing gas based either gas is used and gas is produced reactants. So, very marvelous kind of things that happen with the nickel enzymes. Thank you very much.